Joy Smith. I am the president and CEO of Tech Town and your fearless or fearful moderator uh, of this panel, which uh, is about the secret life of Detroit's tech scene. Um, who knew there was so much going on? I have to tell you, the person who designed this panel is not here to take credit for the panel. Um, and the person is um, Richard King from the SBTDC, who on a trip with me, after we had spent a couple of hours talking about all of the stuff that was going on, said, who knew? We should tell folks that all of this is going on. And so he um, constructed this panel and asked me to moderate it, um, for which I am grateful and excited. I have some amazing panelists here with me, and I'm going to hopefully allow you to hear way more from them than me and open it up once we get through a series of kind of starter questions um, to questions from you guys. I would love for this to be uh, conversational and so given that it's a smaller group in a smaller setting, um, we can make that happen. If you have comments or questions during the um, panel, just raise your hand because I'd like to get you the mic. Um, this is being filmed and recorded and they've asked that we mic all of our conversations so it's clear on the video, which will likely go viral on YouTube later, so um, do your best. Um, with that, I'm going to hand it over uh, to the panelists. I would like you guys to each just give a brief introduction of who you are, why you're here, what you do, and um, what you care most about as it relates to this topic, and then we'll launch into um, a few questions and, and hopefully a free-flowing conversation from there. So thank you for being here. Okay, so I'll start. My name is Matt Clayson. I'm the director of the Detroit Creative Corridor Center. The Detroit Creative Corridor Center is a non-governmental organization focused on the advancement of the creative industries in the city of Detroit and around southeast Michigan. So how do we advance creative industries and what are creative industries? Sorry. What are the creative industries as we define them? It is everything from transportation design to product design to interior design to architectural design to graphic design to advertising design and entertainment arts. How do we advance them? Well, we're really focused on developing a creative corridor in the city of Detroit. For that, we need creative density within this corridor. So think of creative practitioners living, working, building their skills, growing their relationships, challenging each other within the downtown, midtown, and new center areas of Detroit. And we seek that through three targeted programs. One is providing business support services to early stage, high potential um, startup companies in these creative industries. The second is working with more established creative firms, Low Campbell Ewald, Skidmore Studio, Shinola, to help them make business cases for locating operations within the city of Detroit and employing Detroit-based creatives. The third piece is where the regional part comes in, is providing platforms for any creative practitioner in Southeast Michigan to share her his work with a global, international audience. We do that through running the Regents Design Festival, through doing different open studios, through doing national conferences and, and monthly breakfast discussions as to the um, trends in the global creative world. So with that, on to Maria. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Uh, I'm Maria Lalonde. Uh, I work for an organization by the name of Bizdom. Uh, I'm our recruiting and development leader uh, on our leadership team. And what we do at Bizdom is we are a tech startup accelerator. Uh, we help early stage startup companies uh, to launch, fund, and grow uh, their web and tech-based startups. We do that uh, through our accelerator uh, by providing seed funding of up to $125,000. We provide them with space, for, uh, space with us in a very open, collaborative work environment. Uh, and also, we provide them really intense mentoring and access to our network, whether that be for, uh, to help them with advisors, experts, potential customers, uh, to help them to get their startup companies off the ground. We're a nonprofit organization. We're founded by a gentleman by the name of Dan Gilbert. Uh, and uh, Dan is a serial entrepreneur himself. Uh, he is the founder of Quiggin Loans, uh, which is the world's largest online mortgage company. He's also the majority owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers NBA basketball team. But in addition to that, we've got about 112 different companies now and growing every day. It's actually hard to keep track of, um, but in about 15 different states. A majority of those are uh, right in the heart of downtown Detroit. Uh, and we uh, also have companies uh, located, in, we have a business located in Cleveland as well. So 
we're located in uh, the heart of downtown Detroit in what is called the Madison Block, which is a growing uh, tech startup hub. Uh, and then we also have Visit Cleveland. So thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm Sue Jane Gallagher. I'm with Tech Town, and there I'm the Director of Entrepreneurial Services. Um, Leslie asked us to say why we're here. The uh, reason why I'm here is because Leslie is my boss, and she asked me to be on this panel. <laughs> and at Tech Town, um, Tech Town Detroit, we are a business growth center located uh, north of Wayne State University in the Midtown District. And what we do is we support uh, different types of businesses through our labs and blocks program. I focus on working in our labs program, which is working with tech-enabled or tech-based businesses. Um, because we are a, a nonprofit organization working out of the city of Detroit, it's also important for us to take a holistic approach and not just work with tech businesses, but also work with the brick and mortar place-based businesses, hence the reason why we also have our program called Blocks. Hey, yeah, I'm uh, Scott Clauston, um, and uh, not on. How about now? There we go. Uh, Scott Clauston, and uh, an entrepreneur here uh, in Detroit, and uh, last minute kind of Maria saw me in the hall and asked me to be a part of the panel, and, and I said, okay. Mm -hmm. um, so here I am, and, and, but really I think uh, in terms of why this, you know, why I'm here, I think uh, the big reason is because I'm part of an organization called uh, Bamboo Detroit, which is uh, a co-working space that's been open for uh, a little, about six months, and it's gone from zero to, you know, more than 30 members in that time, and, and we're a community of people who are freelancers, people who are working on, on their own startups, and after, you know, working there uh, very regularly, I, I pretty quickly realized that there's nowhere else you'd rather be in starting an organization than to be in a, in a co-working uh, atmosphere. Um, and since that time, we've seen some other great organizations that have uh, that have improved their co-working spaces, like Sac Town and, and others. Um, and there's some really amazing spaces now in Detroit for, for entrepreneurs who don't have to feel alone. Uh, also part of a group called Grow Detroit. And Grow Detroit is an organization that uh, that helps to bring entrepreneurs together uh, around the city. We hold events where we visit interesting companies, um, and we do that in a way that is fun and interesting, um, where we get to feature each of these companies, and they provide some, you know, some food and beverage, and, and we bring a, a good crowd. Um, and so there's a lot of different kinds of organizations like that, um, you know, in, in Detroit that are that are working together to try to, uh, you know, bring people in. I, I come across a lot of people that are new to the area, and it's great to be able to. Hi everybody, my name is Philip Coleman. I am the co-founder of Covered, which is a mobile loyalty rewards program for independent grocery stores. I'm actually going through Tech Town's Lab Venture Accelerator program. Right now we will be completing that on Tuesday coming up. So if you are in the house and would like to come on Tuesday, please talk to us afterwards. Um, you can uh, come here and speak some more. <laughs> but I'm also an intern at Grand Circus, which is a tech training institute focused on technology, business, and design. It's also in the heart of uh, Detroit, affiliated with Dan Gilbert and the Quick and Loans family. And I'm a Wayne State uh, student, currently going for my marketing management, uh, a degree in marketing management, and I'm a part of Wayne State's Blackstone Launchpad, which is an organization that helps student entrepreneurs uh, figure out what they want to do, put them in contact with places like Visum and TechTown. Thank you. It's a lot going on, isn't there? I tried to remember it all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're sort of the poster child for accessing the entire network. So <laughs> I use everybody. Um, we have an ad hoc new guest that I would like to, without troubling too much, the film crew over there, um, asked to move up here by Matt. Clayson. Um, when, when folks heard me complaining that we didn't have enough entrepreneurs, we had more service providers than we had entrepreneurs, they hunted them down for me. So um, we're building this panel as we go and adding an entrepreneur on this end um, who I would 
would like to ask you on the fly to introduce yourself a little bit about your business and how Aubrey dragged you here. <laughs> okay, hi, how you doing? My name is Brian Royster, founder of the company Ask Support Now. Uh, Ask Support Now is a uh, help desk company that has a software that can proactively fix common computer problems. Uh, I actually have my start. Um, I've been an engineer for over a decade, uh, fixing computers for a local hospital. And I wanted to start to share a solution with uh, the world. So I opened up my own business. Uh, I sold refurbished computers. And eventually, eventually that business didn't pan on out. So what I started to do is I went to Aubrey at, at Wayne State's uh, launch pad. And he helped me learn to be intellectually honest. Uh, when it came to uh, assessing my customers, and I was able to uh, survey the customers and find out what they were really looking for, and actually built a program that allows them 100% hands-free troubleshooting. Uh, they install the software, it lets me know if they have viruses, it lets me know if their hard drive is there, it lets me, and if they have any other questions, they can just right there from the application, open up a ticket, and I come on and, and assist them. Thank you. Thank you, Aubrey. And thank you all for joining us while I wasn't looking. Um, hi, Michael. Welcome. It's a room full of my favorite peeps. What am I going to do? <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> do you hear that, Michael? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Just making sure you, you were being backed up on over. Um, so thank you for those introductions. I think uh, this panel really highlights a, a little bit of the a lot that's going on in, um, in tech in the city of Detroit. I have to make one correction uh, for my esteemed colleague, Shu Jane, um, who is not uh, contrary to what she said, forced to be here. And um, secondarily, is here for another reason, because she recently participated in a forum's um, Activate program, which is designed to help um, women tech entrepreneurs mine technology and create businesses around the technologies they find. And so um, I'm hopeful that not only her tech tech experiences, but her um, activated experiences will be brought to bear during this conversation. So with that, um, the, I have some, some pretty cool starter questions, but I want to hear from you guys too. So um, be sure to kind of raise your hands. We have an open Q&A at the end, but um, and, and always welcome Q&A um, during the process. So I guess I would ask the entrepreneurs, not only on the panel, but in the group, what about tech, um, Detroit's tech scene surprised you the most? And um, maybe Scott, from the bamboo perspective, too, kind of what you saw or observed as, um, as surprising as it relates to the tech scene. Yeah, you know, I think um, also being an entrepreneur, I forgot to mention in the intro thing, I mean, I have a, a great thing from Startup Weekend that's called uh, Robo Telecop, and so basically it's a mobile application that logs telemarketer violations. So, I mean, just I think that the most surprising thing about the Detroit scene uh, is that um, you know we really do have all the resources available that, that you really need to go from idea through you know scaling an organization. And I think there there really isn't a better example of that than what was done with the BizGrid effort, right? So. If you're not familiar, this great effort was, uh, you know, something that, that took all the different resources in, in, in the city, in the, in the area, and put them into a, a, a very organized grid, uh, organized by stage. And so there were things on there that I had never heard of or that didn't cross my mind. And, and so now every time someone comes into to Bamboo who's new, who's trying to find out where they should start, you know, it's, it's an amazing resource to point to people and they can, you know, take, it, take a copy of it with them. Um, so I think... What surprised me, you know, the most is, is just that there are more resources than you could probably ever really uh, even use all of them. And, and the neat thing is, is now with the BizGrid, if you go to any one of those resources, um, and maybe they're not the right fit for you, they can at least refer you to something or an organization that is a good fit, and that can help you find what you're looking for. So I think that um, is, is one of the more surprising things. Great, thanks. Philip? Yeah, more so from an entrepreneurial uh, perspective. I guess me being a business student and being very competitive, I expected the Detroit tech startup scene to be more competitive, but it's surprisingly collaborative. Um, tech Town can work with Grand Circus, and Grand Circus can work with Bamboo Detroit. All these different people can come together 
with one initiative to help entrepreneurs within the city stay in the city. And I feel like that was one of the most surprising things for me is that I always felt like, you know, different companies will be rivaling against one another because Bamboo has co-working space and Bizdom or Tactile or Grad Circus or any all these other companies that have more co-working space. But like uh, we said, but like you said before, it's actually it's better for different companies at certain stages. So you may want to work with Tactile at a certain stage depending on the company that you're with. You may want to work with Bizdom depending on the company that you are. It's it's so it's so many different resources. So it can actually funnel out to so many different people, and I think that was very surprising to me. I, I think something that really surprised me is how quickly, well, as Phil was saying, it's, Detroit is a very collaborative community. Um, I've been researching uh, and visiting different startup communities around the country, and uh, I think something really encouraging to me is when I think back to just four years ago, 2010, when we tried to think, okay, identify a single, um, how many tech startup companies we had in the city of Detroit four years ago, we really could only identify one, right? One, four years ago. And so the surprising and encouraging thing to me is how quickly we've been able to build one of the fastest growing startup tech startup communities in the world right now. Detroit is one of the most talked about fastest growing tech startup communities in the world. And I want to say that to encourage everybody, whether you're from Detroit or other places across the state, that if you start with a few key components like helping to create density and helping people to understand the resources that exist and connect them to those, uh, you can make more progress than you could have imagined possible. I think, um, for example, uh, with Bisdom, we actually used to be located within TechTown. And Tech Town is a great partner of ours, a great collaborator of ours. And we um, started growing to a point um, where we had an opportunity to move into a building called the Madison Building. I don't know if anybody's heard of the Madison Building before. A few of you have. Um, great. Um, the Madison Building is a building located in the heart of downtown Detroit. And this is a building that was vacant for decades. Nothing going on in that building. And Dan Gilbert had the vision as an entrepreneur to say, I see this as being uh, uh, the start of where we could create a Detroit tech startup community. And so we gutted the building and renovated it. And, and that was in um, 2011. And basically, like January of 2012, we started putting um, tech startup companies in that building. And in only six months, we were totally 100% to capacity and saying, now we have to find other buildings around here to, put, to um, put these startups into because this community is growing so quickly. So I guess I just say that to encourage you guys, wherever you are in the state, that you can make a lot of progress happen uh, in just a few short years, right? I think that's a great point. Thank you. Oh. I'm like, well, I lost the microphone. <laughs> Give it to you. Yeah. So uh, one of the one of the things I'm always interested in is how does the process for um, doing things right the first time, including all the way to corporate governance, and can, can you give me an idea of what kind of resources are there that helps the starting entrepreneur to be able to say, I want to be able to do it right, and learning about how I can do it right from a corporate governance standpoint, so when it's time to go after and attract investors, I don't have problems that I'm going to solve. Yeah. I think, I think to, we take a different approach as the Detroit Creative Co-Owner Center. We want our entrepreneurs to fail, and, and we want them to, to learn from that. You need to have a place to learn from your mistakes, and that's what makes Detroit unique. It's a place where you can it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to do things wrong the first time because that's the practice that you need to make things right for that big pitch. And, and you have the community there, and you have the resources there, and you have the flexibility because the costs aren't as high. There's not that same type of intensity that you have to get out of the gate like you would in Silicon Valley or Boston or some tighter markets. So it really helps you hone that idea. And I think, I think we have to, you know, in, in Southeast Michigan, 
get out of that, that mentality that everything has to be perfect right off the bat. We have to be afraid to take those risks. We need those places to take that risk so we can learn from it. And I think there's no better place in the country to do that than Detroit. And if you want to be perfect right out of the gate, then it's just it's not the right environment for it. So, so you can't totally de-risk startup activity, right? But you can certainly provide a framework for entrepreneurs to follow. And at TechTown, what we have on the um, tech side, the labs programming, is our accelerator program that Philip is a participant in right now. And what that lends the entrepreneur is that framework that was developed from lessons learned, from previous failures, from serial entrepreneurs who've been there and developed the know-how. Um, and, and we take lessons from across the country. So for example, right now at TechTown, we're using a curriculum that's based on Lean Startup that um, Silicon Valley entrepreneur Steve Blank has been developing and uh, using tools that other entrepreneurial communities have created the business model canvas. So we bring together tools that we've seen that have worked well for others so that we can try, we're not, not going to totally remove all of the risk, but to try to decrease the risk, save the entrepreneur time, save the entrepreneur resources, and improve their odds of success. I know I'm a facilitator, but I can't avoid this question. Um, the lawyer said, the lawyer, the, pet, the former lawyer, <laughs> said we let him, make, we let him um, fail, which I think is a beautiful kind of element of the development of this community. Um, and I think that's been an important part of how we've kind of built some muscle around this. And Philip, um, for uh, instance, I, I don't want to use the word failure, um, but your first startup didn't work out at TechTown, right? And so um, he's in his second startup with a different team and, and kind of pursuing a new, um, a new model with a different group of folks. The other thing you said, um, which was very practical and tactical, it was about, I think, kind of legal structures and things of that nature. And we all have access to lawyers and accountants that work with us on um, a mostly, almost always, pro bono basis to help um, develop best practices and make sure that um, we're not taking serious legal risks as we move through the process of developing um, these businesses. And we all have um, those folks that live in our facilities with us. Yeah, that, that's a really good point. In Detroit, you have, you have lawyers who are hungry to diversify their businesses. From the big firms, the Bustles, the Mill Canfields, the Dykemas, all the way down to the individual practitioners. Because they're all based on auto and that supply chain. They, they see what happens. They remember 2008, still stinging um, the legal market uh, when, when you're reliant on just one sector of the economy. So they're willing to offer these you know, pretty in depth pro bono services and that interest of diversifying, the interest of, of, of you hitting it big. And then all of a sudden, they have a new client who's there who's going to pay the $300, $400, $500 an hour for the, you know, the, the intense you know, IP work or something like that. So, and, and very few regions, I think, have that type of hungry legal community or accounting community um, that, that really knows they need to diversify. And the way to do that is through these entrepreneurial support services. Yeah, and I think we've, you know, we've seen that firsthand at, at Bamboo Detroit. We've seen legal firms come down literally from the suburbs and, and open an office in Detroit because of what they've seen going on and, and they come and they'll open they'll have office hours at an organization and say hey you know we spend you know uh, 15 minutes with us and, and ask any questions you want and, and they're looking to you know, obviously get clients out of it at, at some point or, or some organization that could pay them down the line but you know we've seen this like more and more where they actually hire somebody and they're like hey you go get embedded in the Detroit startup community and, and and figure out and, and, and start there because they see it they see it as a real viable market and that's a good sign. So we're all I'll get to you next. Thank you. Um, we're all bragging about the wonderful and amazing things we do for entrepreneurs. And now I'm going to ask the entrepreneurs on the panel, what are we missing? So what is the the key resource that you wish you could find that you can't find? It was so hard to find that you wish we would have made it easier for you. Um, and so I'll start with you, Brian, and, and move. 
um, down to the end of the table, if you don't mind. Well, in all honesty, uh, there are a lot of resources. <laughs> there are a lot of resources uh, that, that, that are available here in the city um, to take advantage of. Uh, one thing about myself is uh, I, I finally had to force myself. I actually, what, what really started my, my, the change in perspective was a shift in my paradigm when I went to Tech Town, actually. And they told me that there were resources out there available to me. And they told me what books to read. And that, that got me on the right track. I think, uh, I think there's a lack of uh, general knowledge. General knowledge that, uh, that an entrepreneur needs because there were things that I didn't understand at that time, which probably or more than likely contributed to why my first business failed. So just being able to access those resources uh, and having them more readily available, I would say. Thank you. Well, I don't know if it's, it's not necessarily uh, something that it's like our community's fault, but I would feel like once I found out about the tech startup world, and like I've always had ideas as a child, you know, being an entrepreneur, you're like one of those kids that everybody's like, oh, you're selling bubble gum in class, you're a person going out, you're selling the chips, or you're thinking of all these grand schemes that can make you, you know, rich, rich, rich and beyond your dreams. But um, once I actually was introduced to uh, people at Tech Town and really started to hone my skills and kind of like just get the ground running. Even though the first startup didn't pan out, I immediately was immersed into another startup and continued to hack away at my dreams. So I feel like it should be more promotion of what's actually going on. It's not often that you hear on the news that, you know, Tech Town is doing something or Grand Circus or Bizna has something going on. I feel like uh, we highlight so much that's going wrong with the city and quote low bombs, but we don't highlight the things that are going great, which is this tech startup scene. I feel like if I would have known about Tech Town earlier, if I would have known about Wisdom earlier in my life, I, I really would have been so much further along, I feel like. But nonetheless, if we could start that now, just getting the community and more people outside of the tech startup scene like we're doing now, trying to educate people about what we have to offer so that they can be a part of it. Yeah, and I, I would just add, um, I, you know, I think there are there are two things I think we're missing from the from the uh, Detroit um, startup scene, and, and one of them is is uh, I think miseducation around the idea that that entrepreneurs, a lot of them get this idea that um, they need money, right? Like they need funding to be able to go after their idea or build their product or develop what they're working on. And in a lot of cases, it's it's um, they're they're misguided or or they're not ready for funding. Um, and so I think that is one of the things that we can do a better job in, in redirecting people who are coming into the system and, and seeking uh, capital when they're not ready, really ready for it. Um, I think the other thing is, is that we could uh, really use more in the, in the system is mentorship. Um, like clear, you know, more defined mentorship and opportunities for that. You know, having someone who's 18 to 24 months ahead of where you are is so valuable. You know, someone who's who's already been there, but not somebody who's a grizzled, uh, you know, semi-retired person who's been out of the game for a long time. That's probably not as relevant to what they're working on, even though they do have a lot of wisdom. But having somebody, uh, a mix of mentors at different stages, I think, could be really uh, valuable. Thank you for your candor. Next question. I'm Jeff, and I'm a grizzled old. <laughs> I was promised secrets. So, what is your best meetup or, or gathering that we may not know about that you know that may give you those other people that you can collaborate with and find success? So, I want those secrets. All the secrets. And a password to get in. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it starts out with starting with one place and getting to know the right people at that place. I started probably my first start would have been Blackstone Launchpad at Wayne State which led me to Tech Town, which led me to Wisdom, which led me to Grand Circus, which led me to the entire Madison block and above and beyond, to Bamboo. Just, it, it really starts with going to one of these places and getting to know the people that are there. 
because they're actually willing to help. You would think that you know they keep these secrets so close to the chest, but they're not secrets at all. They'll really tell you, hey, your company, you should talk to this person. Let me introduce you to this investor. Let me introduce you to this mentor. Let me introduce you to this lawyer. They can tell you more about it. And to have that at, at your hand is, is really beneficial. So even for smaller events, I'm the type of person that will just go to any event just to see who's going to be there, just to network a little bit. And maybe five people be there, maybe a thousand people there. But you never know out of the five, you may need three of them to join your next startup uh, venture. So even yesterday at Grand Circus, we had an event called Beer and Builders, which is uh, basically free beer and talking. Like, it's nothing more than that. You can just come and have a beer and really sit down or not alcoholic beverage if it's your preference. But uh, you can really just sit down and talk with other entrepreneurs, other uh, lawyers, other tech startup people, and uh, have it a loose-based setting so it's not, you don't feel too concerned about what they're thinking about you, they're interviewing you or anything like that. So I think it's really just getting out and talking to people, which is like the oldest thing in the book for business. It's really just networking. Just really go to these places once you find out that they're there and just talk. I think if you asked about uh, specific meetups that were interesting or that most people know about, I think I can name a few. I mean, one of them would be Detroit Startup Drinks. Uh, it's one that means you can find them on Facebook and, and online. It's a very casual group, but it's uh, it, it's very um, it's, it's an interesting mix of people who are developers or people who are new to the area and, and want to discover it. Uh, D New Tech is a great organization where they, they shift to different areas where five stars present for five minutes each. You can find them on meetup.com. Uh, there's other organizations like, you know, Grow Detroit, my organization, that puts on events that travel to different interesting companies and, and feature. Uh, we have an unconference coming up in February. So there's a lot of um, interesting organizations out there and, and meetups. And I think if you go to one of them, a lot of times somebody I'll meet and I'll say, hey, you know, I think there's there's actually this hacker meetup that is a better fit for you than startup because you're interested in drones. So therefore, I think you should go to this right. node copter or this maker meetup. I mean, there's a lot of subsets of these, but um, I think it's about finding one as a starting point and then trying to find people there who can connect you to other events. And this is what's really fun about Detroit right now because I've been living in the city for about 12 years, and when I first moved in the city, you would know everyone who was doing everything. And there you would know everyone who was behind every event, and you'd know everyone who was going to go to the event. And now, I I've, I've, I've haven't heard about half of these. Uh, it's like big city problems. There's all these great events happening in the city that they're, they're, they're working in harmony, but it's, it's now it's, it's time for a broader audience to come to get over the perceptions of the past, understand that this is a safe place to grow one's business, that's a predictable place to grow one's business, that people are making money in the city, and, and, and to just figure out where the right fit is. And the beautiful thing is, it's right a place where you can make money and you can get connected at the same time, because you don't have that, 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 that real or false sense of competition. Everyone's in it together, and it's Atlanta. Okay, you're saying all these great things, and I really appreciate it all. But talk about all these these programs. Are they listed in Detroit News Free Press every week? Uh, have you had news stations coming out on a regular basis to promote these programs? I have a continuous, regular basis so that people know. I mean, we see so much negative in the news. I mean, do, do they do a series? And I talk if they have a series that continues, not a blur, and then we forget about it. In order for this type of thing, because we went to a, a, a program over at Wayne State couple months ago and it was just fantastic about how Detroit is growing and it just really built up the hopes and that you're doing this too. And there's just a lot of positive, you know, excitement going on. And this is just really bringing up hopes. But 
if the rest of the population doesn't know about this, and I hear the negativity from other people that I, I'm surrounded by, and I'm trying to say, no, you know, there's a lot of great things going on. And I'm not hearing it in the news, and I'm not seeing it in the newspapers about what's going on. And let me tell you, Art, do you run these things every single week, everything that's going on? Did you hear that, Brenna? Matt Rapp's left the room. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Mike. <laughs> so media people say no. <laughs> yeah, I, I really appreciate your comment, and I we could use our Detroit tech startup community could use as much help as possible, and, and um, from not only the press but just everybody letting people know what's going on. Um, I think people are very surprised to hear that there's this thriving community in Detroit right now. And, and um, the, the more exposure and attention that we can have for it, the better. It's going to help these entrepreneurs tell their story about what they're doing with their startup and help people to go, gosh, that's a great um, project and I have a need for that. And so not only to let people know what's going on, but to help our startups to have more customers um, that, uh, that they can help as well, right? Uh, I think. Uh, some other ways, we all work together to promote each other's events, both in traditional media sources and through social media uh, and through our websites and things like that. So we all work as a team to say, gosh, we know that Tecton has a venture accelerator coming out. We're going to let people know about that. Um, one thing I know that um, Scott Clausen mentioned earlier as far as uh, a good resource for entrepreneurs is something called the BizGrid, uh, which is a really great resource that lists uh, 54 organizations that are in the city of Detroit that are specifically there in one place to help um, to help entrepreneurs, whether it's providing funding or co-working space or legal uh, expertise. So um, BizGrid, you could find at bizgrid.com. You could also find it uh, at some of our websites. You can stop in and actually get a paper copy of a BizGrid as well. So if you know entrepreneurs who need help, um, it's one great source for them with an aggregated list of our Detroit um, entrepreneurship resources. Um, but one other thing, if people want to know about what meetups, what events are going on, just reach out to any of these organizations and say, hey, what do you know going on? And then just RSVP, sign up, stop in, hang out at one of these events. You're going to meet some incredible people and you'll learn about other good events that are happening as well. So I think um, I sort of teased our media friends, but there are people in the room that actually spend their lives writing about this and promoting this activity. Mike Brennan's one of them. He's sitting in the front row. Um, it still really is sort of a subculture, right? And it is about changing perceptions. And to be in this space, you got to kind of seek it out and find it. Um, it's not terribly sexy for mainstream media to talk about good things. They'd rather talk about bad things. We've created a variety of places where we do talk about good things. Um, Holman has his online thing where he's really focused on it's that Michigan business online, something, something, something. Your Michigan tech. How I tech do? Am I tech news? Dot com, yep. Right? Um, where that's all you'll read about is what's going on in this in this particular subculture. Um, Matt Rausch left, and he writes only about this space. And so um, there are people that are really fully focused on, on raising this up, but we just have to continue to, your point, shine a light on it and, and be willing to celebrate good news instead of really getting stuck in, in bad news, I think. Yeah, and Matt Rausch, um, you should sign up for his daily email. He sends out a summary of technology uh, developments and activities. So that's a, he's a great source. At Cranes Detroit, they um, have a reporter there called Amy Carroll. She covers the small business beat in Detroit, so that's another source of information for you. Okay. Yes, sir. You talked a little bit about funding and the need for it at the very early stages. What I'd like to know is what's the environment for funding when a company gets to the point where they need some significant funds to get going? 500000 to a million dollars. What's that environment like? That's extremely tough, right? So uh, it's probably the number one 
need that we hear entrepreneurs think they need is funding, right? And as Scott Clauston mentioned earlier, we really want to help people to understand, you know what, there's so much you can do before you are even ready to go ask for funding. And so we encourage people to reach out to these support organizations so we can help guide you and say, okay, we know, let's think about what's the problem, what's the solution, let's help you to get some potential customers on board, right? And then, at that point, our organizations can help connect you to the investment community, help you to schedule those meetings with them, help you to learn how to put your pitch deck together so you're putting your best foot forward, and then um, and make sure that you actually are have enough traction where the investment community it would make sense for them to take that meeting from you and consider it, make sure it's a good fit for their portfolio, right? So my best suggestion is uh, anybody who's trying to raise a significant round of funding, don't try to do that on your own. It's much better when you're working. Um, a lot of those investors are busy and, and they need to make sure that that meeting is worth their while. Work with one of the support organizations that can help you make sure you're doing that at the appropriate time. And if you get plugged into a smart zone, you can go after the Michigan Pre-Seed Fund, which is a matching fund. That could, not total match, but uh, you know, Mike Finney came in and didn't want to make a total. But I mean, if you can raise a couple hundred thousand dollars, they'll throw some money in the kitty, but... Yeah. I'm going to get in trouble for oh, you sorry. not being yes. like that's okay. Smart zones, there's lots of smart zones around the state, Tech Town's one, Automation Alley's another. Uh, and so uh, you should get plugged into those, because that's what they do. They're MEGC funds them, or the various universities, whoever. And once you get vetted by them, if you're, uh, you can have access to the Michigan Free Seed Fund. There's no guarantees, because that's another round of vetting. But it is money available, and it's not at the million dollar level. It's two or three hundred thousand, maybe, if you're lucky. But I mean, how much money do you need? If you can't get it done in a couple hundred thousand, you don't have a business. So. I think, too, I think Detroit's at a unique crossroads right now where we have the world's eyes on us. Um, every single week, there's another angel or venture capitalist coming here to try to figure out what's going on in the city, what to invest in, what beyond real estate are the opportunities here kind of a buy low, sell high type mentality he's kicking in. And impressive venture capitalists with names that we would all recognize that have been here. If you look at a few derelict buildings along the way, but still, they're here. The attention is here. What we need and where we're really primed to do well finally now is with a lot of new curriculum adjustments that we've all been undergoing. We're helping our businesses get their first, second, third client experiences and more importantly build that case of research, that case of consumer clients and inquiries and, and, and research that one needs to really tell a venture capitalist why this, this investment is going to work over everything else. So as, as opposed to what we were doing five, six years ago in the one size fits all entrepreneurship, okay, here's how you write a business plan, boom, done, you're an entrepreneur. Now it's about testing, it's about validating, it's about what's your hypothesis. And what's the research behind it, getting the pitch together, and then putting it to one of these you know, big time international investors. They're here. It's a matter of us being at their field then. Another thing I, I want to encourage everybody, if you are seeking funding, not only to reach out um, to these resources, but these business plan competitions like here today, ACE uh, and Great Lakes Entrepreneurs Quest, and something called Accelerate Michigan that happens once a year in November. These are really powerful opportunities for you to, um, to try your hand at, to try to get your pitch notice. And even if you're not one of the finalists that's allowed to pitch, go to the event. Learn from the other people that are pitching. Learn what do I need to put um, together? What types of things do I need to make sure I've researched before I'm at that level? And then also, while you're at these events, you're going to have some of the best investors from our Michigan and, uh, our Michigan investment community and beyond that are here. So it's a great opportunity for you to meet Ken Kuski, the head of the Blue Water Angels. You want to meet him? Here he, here he is today. You know, he's not in the room with us right now. So you really <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, no, but but just just know these are really powerful opportunities for you as well. Yes, Michigan Growth Capital Symposium. Everybody who's everybody in the investment community will be there. So it's coming up soon. And sir, if I understand your business because I want to say I saw your partner pitch at the women's competition last year. Actually, she was a finalist too, I believe. You're post revenue, right? Nope. No, not yet. Free revenue. Okay, so you're still that needing that. Okay. Does. Yeah, so I mean, these are. I, I was just wondering if there was like another uh, another avenue here for you. So I, I think this advice is 
sound advice, and we have really figured out as, as a collaborative network how to prepare you for the, at, the right asks at the right times. So we're not wasting your time or the investors' times. Um, and to Matt's point, I don't think five years ago we were, we were serving um, that as effectively as we do now. Um, and, and so I would encourage you to work with your local smart zone or one of the folks on this panel here to help you kind of figure out good next steps. Any other questions from the audience? Yeah, I just have a question uh, as far as uh, outreach and, and getting the information out. What types of things are you doing or considering doing, or maybe maybe you're not yet? Uh, getting this information out to you know primary and secondary education, uh, just so they're aware. You know, as a as a, a kid when you're still in school, high school, uh, college, that these things are even available, um, so that you don't have some of the missteps that uh, folks have had and try to do things on their own. So just question what efforts are being done that, you know, as we're trying to train, change the culture, it has to start at the beginning. So. That's a great question. That's right. I mean, I, I was involved, uh, I was fortunate enough to be involved in a, a startup called Kidpreneur, which was bringing these entrepreneur uh, principles to kids age 9 to 13. So you're getting them exposed to things much earlier. Um, you know, middle school age or so, um, before they, they really have you know everything figured out. Um, so you get you get these experiences, and the kids really open their you know open their mind to it, and they come in with an idea or not even an idea, and you leave with something um, even greater and a more developed business. Um, these are real businesses. These kids are running at like you know 11, 12 years old, and and, and now that was a pilot program, and now they brought that to Detroit. Um, you know, out of uh, Dehive, which is another great organization. If you're new to the area, looking to get plugged in, um, take tours of Detroit, things like that. They also have a retail program, so you can find now Kipreneur out of that space. So I think they're starting to bring down and recognize the importance of you know, entrepreneurship in the, in the earlier education. I think that's something that we've observed in our neighborhood work as well. So um, TechTown carries its acceleration strategies to Detroit neighborhoods where we help stabilize um, you know, the hyper-local economies. And one of the things we found was that while we were coaching local businesses to hire locally, there wasn't a, a strong enough pipeline of people interested to work in small businesses. And so we carry programming through partnerships. Um, our programming is not necessarily positioned appropriately to, to teach kids, but we've, we've carried programming into the high schools. And so now we're teaching 8 through 12 entrepreneurship, which is really, you know, not just about starting your own business, but building a business plan for your life and, and really kind of working to figure out if you fit into um, that culture and if not, which culture. And um, it really started to realize that, well, you know, most of us spend a lot of time thinking about the technology pipeline we have to build. The more critical pipeline we have to focus on is the talent pipeline, right? And we have to get earlier and earlier. Um, in fact, I was looking for his card after you asked the question. There's a gentleman um, right next to the Tech Town booth in the open forum who has a, a firm called B-Side that's doing that in Ypsilanti with um, underserved populations um, to great results and has been doing it for five years. So I do think it's a recognized um, uh, challenge. Uh, the, the, the serial entrepreneur that created Kidpreneur has a couple of those kids at home and I think was inspired to really move, um, move in that direction. And it's a really powerful program teaching kids. Um, not only you know the, the technology side, but the business side. So I do think we're aware of it, and you're just starting to see those gaps, um, Phil. Right. Um, even Grand Circus, as I mentioned before, is a training institute for uh, with folk, classes focused on technology, business, and design. And they're actually working with uh, some of the Detroit Public High Schools uh, in a program coming up to teach them uh, coding classes, whether it be web development or mobile development and also just creating a core talent base within Detroit because we have startups that come in and out of the building every day, but they need people for their team. They need people to build their apps, to make their websites, to do their uh, their logos and designs, to help them with their pitch and things like that. So we, as Grand Circus, they're a training institute to be able to build that core group of people, to be able to build your team, or to start your own startup from that point on. So many success stories. Uh, just to mention one, it was a guy that was a pizza delivery 
uh, employee and he went through a training course and now he's a freelancer developer making a lot more money than what he was making before. So. Right. And, and you can't start too young with kids. So this is um, not tech-based, but there is also a program in Detroit that teaches kids how to start a lemonade stand. That's a business, right? And gives you the business basics, teaches you accounting operations. So there are entrepreneurial activities and programs so that we can nurture the entrepreneurial talent while they're still young. All right, Maria, you get the last word because I, um, based on the time on my clock, have to do my wrap. So um, say what you were going to say, and then we'll do some quick closing remarks, um, including some advertisement I have to do. Sure, I was just going to mention two programs that VISM is involved with. Um, we're actively involved in volunteering and supporting um, high school students and younger um, to understand about entrepreneurship, right? And um, we have an intern that worked with us at VISM last summer and another intern from Quicken Loans. They're both University of Michigan students and they created an organization called uh, Detroit Entrepreneurship Network where every, sun every other Sunday they bring high school students um, and we uh, offer our space at Bisdom on Sundays they learn about entrepreneurship so they're taking them through all different types of um, coursework and uh, activities to help these high school students understand about entrepreneurship. We have another program called Startup Effect that um, one of our Bisdom Venture for America fellows is, is founded with a few other Venture for America fellows and they're going into um, Detroit public schools to teach um, the Detroit public school um, middle schoolers about entrepreneurship. They're doing that here in Detroit. They're also doing it in uh, New Orleans and a few other places around the country. Wonderful. So we, we hear you. Yeah. <laughs> we know we have to get earlier. Um, thank you all. And one correction um, to the website for BizGrid. It's DetroitBizGrid.com, which I didn't know. Oh, thank, thank you, you Michael, mm -hmm. for um, letting us know. And then I have this um, thing that I need to read. Um, many of you received a giving card from DonorsChoose.org. I didn't, but if you did. Um, this card has an allotment of $10 for you to give to any educational program listed on the DonorsChoose.org site. Please find out about redeeming the cards before you leave. There will be volunteers at the registration desk to help you understand the process and the power your $10 can wield. So it sounds like just a little movement on your part means $10 can go somewhere cool, but this is all I know. So with that, um, I want to thank you, illustrious panel, for your comments and support and participation. For all of you, for being engaged and um, interested and thoughtful. Um, any final remarks before we wrap up and let people head out into the evening traffic? No, and the big events still tonight. What's the big event? Well, the, the, the oh, the pitch is after this. The program starts at uh, 5.30. Oh, so, okay, don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the rest of the program. <laughs>